What's going on, y'all? This is Greg. Greg said it. Back with another inspiration, motivation. Had a wonderful live. I think we averaged over 230 throughout the live. Probably one of the bigger lives. And we talked about what people don't see or what they didn't see about the Colorado Colorado State matchup. If you haven't and you've seen this, make sure you go back and check that out. And with that, make sure you subscribe so you can catch all future conversations. Because, Like I said, it's a long season. I told them last week that people threw these boys in too early, but I'm not surprised because I kind of followed the conspiratory route of this thing. And if you really follow what I said, I've been talking about it all off season, how this thing is going to go, and it's coming together. I have my beliefs on why it's so weird, you know, with the referees and the calls and how we having double digits. I mean, it's not just this one. Like, all calls, not their fault. You're choosing to throw them just like you're choosing not to throw some of those same calls on another team. Yet, I noticed that any team that will play Colorado probably is going to have a higher than average penalty rate and just so they can make it look fair or close as fair as possible. Because it gets real suspicious if Colorado just keep having you know, 10, 11, 12 penalties, and the other team won't have one or two. You know, they they, they got to make it look like something. So it seemed like it's just been everybody's been having double-digit penalties. It's not just Colorado. I guess that's the new strategy. But there's also a strategy that I'm picking up on, and maybe you do too. It's something I call bait hate. You know, sometimes people in life want to set you up to act a fool. They want to make it look like you're the one that's wrong. They want to make it look like you're out of character. Their whole strategy is to get you in that place where you have no credibility, get you in that place where how they treat you is justified. They want to get you in the place for you to say something that they can use against you. Does that sound familiar? I bet it ain't only with Coach Prime. Do you notice? Are your eyes as open as you say? It's hard to stand for the truth when you don't want to acknowledge the full truth. It's hard to say you can stand against. Stuff like we see in with Colorado is like, come on now. It's not football. Or you just let it be played on the football field and let it be win or lose like you see. But it's hard to stand for the truth when it's a part-time truth that you're standing for. It's hard to stand for mistreatment of Coach Prime when you justify mistreatment on somebody else. If you're going to stand for it, you got to stand for it. What I mean, when you look at the press conferences where they're like asking these weird questions, these set-up questions, to the point where Coach Prime got to be like, look, I ain't even answer your question. Matter of fact, I don't even come back. Oh, he's the bad guy. The guy that's antagonizing him. Day in, day out, week in, week out. Putting out all kinds of hit pieces. And they keep showing up in your face like it's cute. That'll antagonize you. That'll provoke you. When you look at the players getting there, and they're asking these weird questions, trying to set up the players to say something so they can have a hit piece. Everything on social media is fair game to them. They're always trying to Say, hey, that, that was going on, even if they got to make it up. From the band and the music thing recently, all the way back to the concert, to my Coach Prime making players go, even though players didn't go, or get put out the team during the spring. All back to players going in the portal, making comments. Most of them not even playing. It wasn't green on the other side, green earth. You got some people playing at other schools and their roles are not really that much significantly different. And the whole goal is to not coach prime. The whole goal is to say, he's the problem. He's the reason why these players can't play, uh, as not are not performing. It's him. It's his culture. It's his environment. He's up in there bringing speakers, motivational speakers, pros, He's in there trying to teach them how to be men. Got the highest GPA. Then all of the sports, probably a record. And you're looking at the fact that 
he tries to be respectful. He don't talk about other cultures in the media yet. Every chance they get, they throw blows at him. He's not throwing blows at other cultures. He try to big them up. He try to elevate, especially people who in the same situation as him, building new programs. He tries to do all of that stuff. Yet, they do everything they can to make it as if he's a bad person. He's, he's arrogant. He's selfish. Every the negative, the most negative thing they can say about him, they say it, and they say it consistently, as if you're supposed to believe them, because they keep saying it. They use their mouths to just talk, 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 talk. Recently, we watched a game Colorado State actually drunk the Kool Aid to believe they can beat Colorado, because the media and the people in the world they said Colorado sucks. But all that talent, all of a sudden, Shadow ain't worth a crap. Travis ain't what you think he is. Coach Prime definitely don't know what he's doing. Everybody on his staff is dumb as a rock. No matter what they've done before, no matter what knowledge and expertise they bring, they're all garbage because it's Colorado and Coach Prime. And they expect their mouth as if they're the almighty God to make it true. Or maybe you're going to come in line with it and agree with it to it become true. It's interesting. It's interesting how people actually believe Everything they hear on the media. I talked about that earlier. Boldface lie, they believe it. Because a lot of times they want to believe it. But it's also the reality of they've gotten into the habit of being lazy and saying, it must be true because they said it. It must be true because the stats. I read the stats. The stats don't always tell the whole story. Colorado stats wasn't exceptionally more yet they manhandled Colorado State. Then you look at when Colorado State got a lot of their yards and things at the very end. Colorado State never had a chance in that game. And yeah, they made some mistakes, but those were mistakes based off of performance. Like pressure on the quarterback made him throw those interceptions. He'd have a clean pocket and just make a bad throw. It was a cause and effect thing. It wasn't, oh, they're having a bad game. No, Colorado hit them. Versus when we talked about some of the times when Colorado did, they just blew their own, they just made mistakes. Or penalties hurt them. Either way, this is not last year's Colorado, as I told them. Colorado State had to find out the hard way. The media and the haters wanted you believe, oh, they is no different. Clearly they are. But it's amazing just in three games, they wanted you to take that bait. They wanted you to believe the lie. It ain't even hype. A lie that was based off of what? Emotions and lies. They wanted you to believe Colorado season was over. And not only that it was over, that even Colorado State was going to beat them. They actually had the audacity to even choose Colorado State to beat Colorado. And even make comments like, it's not an upset. They're just better. Where they get that lie from? One game against Nebraska. They wanted to get them in North Dakota State. North Dakota, North Dakota State game wasn't as close as it looked. They got a late touchdown. Yeah, Colorado had a low start. They got a late touchdown. There was a lot of calls that made the game what it was. It was some calls that made Nebraska game not as close as what it would have been. Yeah, Colorado made some mistakes. They got in the red zone three times, then scored. So much for domination. It's like the media narrative or whoever narrative is to create an ulterior, an alternative reality in your head. It's not based off of reality, but it can create it by their words. It can create it by their perspective. They really want you to believe that Colorado is hot garbage. Even Colorado last year, who's supposed to be so garbage, they only had two games out of eight that was not within really a touchdown. You look at the fact that one game out of all games was more than a touchdown. I think it was 10 points. And that was the game UCLA where well, they scored 14 points in fourth quarter, which was late in the game. Because the reality was they were only down by a field goal and then they ended up scoring one more touchdown late in the game. 
That's after they ejected Shiloh in the third quarter. It was a neck and neck game. Even all the way up to halftime, Colorado could have went in with the lead, but they ended up going in seven to six. UCLA supposed to have been a good team. Arizona, I think, beat them by three. Arizona was so great, but they only beat Colorado by three. Colorado was a declining team at that point. Everybody they played was close. Oregon State, they supposed to have been so good. That was close. Utah beat them by three. They took three touchdowns off the board for Colorado. They said, oh, they didn't play, whatever. We talking about record y'all want to throw around. The reality is, as bad as Colorado was last year, they were like awfully close to be so bad. That I mean, everybody else was bad, too. It wasn't that far off. So we got to realize, they've been playing you the whole time with the stat game. You can most sacks, did that, but Shudu still was throwing that ball. They've been throwing you off with the record thing. It was 4-8, and eight, but they don't tell you that all them games was basically run winnable except two. That's the manipulation. They don't give you the full story. They frame it up to make it look like something it's not. Don't take the bait. That bait that they're throwing out to everybody to come along, let's bash Colorado. Let's make them the bad guy, the boogeyman. Their coach is horrible. He don't cuss, drink, or he don't, he don't put the kids down. But they do their best to make him the worst coach ever. He run off all his players. He don't know what he's doing. He only loves his son. He's daddy ball. They do everything they can to find something negative. How much positive have they said about him? He don't do nothing positive, I guess. Except make money and get people to come to the games. They won't say nothing positive about him. They better wake up. It's a lot of bait. And you know that's crazy to me because nobody want to be done like that. You certainly don't want to be done like that. You sow what you reap. You reap what you sow. However you want to look at it. Because nobody wants to be lied on. Nobody wants to be mistreated. Nobody wants people to define their destiny by negativity and negativity and pressure them until they fold, until they crumble. Nobody want to turn everybody against them so that everybody can create a self-fulfilling prophecy. Always no good. Or wait till you do one thing wrong and use that to define you. Nobody wants that to happen to them or their children. Yet, this is what they do to certain people, like Coach Prime and others. They manipulate the minds of people, ignorant people, gullible people. Oh, it's too easy to influence grown people with a simple piece of research, with a simple piece of decency and consideration. They know, hold on, what's your motive? Hold on, that's not true. They just go with it. Some of them sometimes make them align with jealousy, hate. And sometimes fear. It just makes people just align with stuff it's like it triggers something in them the undeveloped unhealed components of them and i know that's deep but we're here for it don't do to people what you don't want done to you and if you hate yourself maybe just maybe you don't want it done to somebody else like your kids like your mama your daddy because i i'm thoroughly convinced you put traps out there for people Sometimes you'll fall in your own trap. Or somebody you didn't mean to fall in the trap, fall in it. Or even more, you put so much negative out there, negative, think it's you, they friend. Or, if they don't get somebody coming to you since you endorse the negativity, it's like, well, you're the perfect person. If I need to find somebody to take it out on is you. Because you open the door, you let them in. They got to eat, they eat somebody, they're going to eat you. Why do you think putting all this negative out there is good? I, I watch so many people come on Colorado channels and my channel, other people's channels. Blah, blah, blah. I don't even have time to barely do my own stuff. I can do so much more on my channel, but I got other stuff. Yet yeah, these people got time. They got so much time to be in multiple people's channel talking junk. 
You ain't even playing their team, and they still here. You win, they still got something negative to say. You lose, they, they want to jump all on you. What a sickness. What a sad life that your life is energized and centered around negativity. As if, and you can't fool me, as if your life just going to be so positive while you spew out all that negative. If it ain't negative, just wait. Just wait. Your turn coming. You celebrating the downfall of another man. Keep dancing. It's your time coming. That's not a wishful thing. That is, reality. that is fair. You play with ants and stir up ants and like a kid playing in it. Ants going to get on you. You playing them. You play with fire. You liable to get burnt. You playing with it. Playing with evil and negativity. Playing with hate. Playing with jealousy. It's only a matter of time before it's your turn. <laughs> Don't believe me? Mess around and find out. I'm just Greg with Greg said it. I appreciate y'all coming through. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to y'all soon.